car enthusiasts, we love the new Corvette Stingray. We think so much of it, in fact, that we've lined it up here beside the very best sports cars that Europe can offer, each of which has been hand-picked to gauge just how good the new 7th generation Corvette has become in specific areas. The Porsche 911 Carrera S, for example, is here to see how fast the new VET is and how well it stops. The Jaguar F-Type V8 is here to compare against for noise and general behind-the-wheel entertainment. And the R8 V8 was invited to test how sharp or otherwise the Corvette's handling is on and beyond the limit. Before any of that, however, here's what's new about the latest Corvette Stingray. There is so much that's new on the new C7 Corvette. You almost have to start with the bits that aren't new. And it, you're basically talking about a couple of switches uh, and a, maybe an indicator stalk or something like that, and that's it. Other than that, everything is new on this car. And it really does feel it. The engine, of course, is still a monster great atmospheric V8 with or connected to a manual gearbox. All the Corvette purists will be very pleased indeed about that. And the gearbox itself is miles better than the previous one. They've worked really hard on the chassis this time. They always work hard on the chassis, but they seem to have hit the sweet spot this time. The ride is good. The steering is just miles better than I remember. You don't get any of the nasty kind of kickback that would corrupt the steering in the previous generation cars. This, this car steers really well. And this is how nicely balanced it is when you start to muck about. The name is also new this time, although it kind of harks back to a, a bygone era because it's now called, once again, the Corvette Stingray. And I think that's great. I mean, that, that is a proper car name. Oh, it's just, it's just tremendous. It's cuddly and old-fashioned and just kind of warm in everything it does, the Corvette. I really, really like it. And here is the killer blow. It costs £62,000 in the UK. And for that, you get 460 horsepower, 465 pounds-feet of torque. But forget all that. This is how it compares with what the best of Europe can currently offer. Stay tuned if you're a Corvette fan. So the first test faced by the Corvette is against the 911, and it's all about low to mid-range pickup. To eradicate the inconsistency of a full-on launch, it was a touch damp in places on the day of filming, unfortunately, we got both cars rolling at 30 miles an hour in second gear and then basically we nailed them right up to the top of fourth and beyond. And as you can see, the Corvette nailed the 911. We did the test several times and every time it was the same result. Round one then to the Corvette Stingray. For test two, also against the 911, we got them both rolling at about 90 miles an hour in fourth gear. Then we just hit the brakes in both to see which could stop fastest. Result, as you can see, the 911 wins and wins pretty easily. Round two then goes to Europe. For round three against the F-Type V8, we wanted to see very simply which one sounds best. And maybe you can make your own minds up by simply listening to them. Here, for example, they're at full beans in second gear. Now wide open, but from low revs in fourth gear. And finally, during a down change, followed by hard acceleration. The 
Full of X sounds are great, no question, but then so does the F type, albeit perhaps in a slightly more digitised kind of way. Overall, I'd say it was a high score draw on the noise front, although inevitably this one's always going to be subjective. As is how much fun you can have in each of them behind the wheel, and in both cases, the answer is again, lots, as you can see. The Corvette feels beautifully balanced doing this sort of thing, and you really can steer it on the throttle. Interestingly though, it was a touch quicker than the Jaguar, through our handling course, and the F-Type also ate up its rear tyres faster when we were doing the sideways stuff, which meant eventually that we had to park the F-Type, leaving just the Corvette and the Audi to fight it out. The R8 was a tiny bit quicker still against the stopwatch, thanks partly to its all-wheel drive system, and it felt maybe a touch more agile than the Corvette too. But at the same time, it was not as much fun as the Stingray, just to hoon about it. So once again, it was a highly honourable draw for the handling contest. Conclusion. The new Corvette Stingray can hold its head up very high indeed against Europe's best. No question. It sounds great. It goes better than any of them. It looks good. It stops well, and it's an absolute peach of a car to drive at the limit. But here's the thing though, at 62 grand, it's also a complete bargain beside Europe's best. Just a great car full stop really. Which means the seventh generation Corvette is also, by quite some margin, the best yet. The end.